Oh yeah, and this is the actual second video in creating a pocketing slash padding pattern from an image, importing that image into FreeCAD and actually creating this effect. You can do it with more and more complex images like this uh, map of America. It's exactly the same as that, that A image that we got. It just takes a little bit more time to do. Um, we went over the Python macro to actually do this and now we're gonna complete our Python macro in this video and then in future videos we'll extend this further. So we've got, we've got our image width, we've got our pixel data and we've got our ignore pixel. So now we've got all those, we can actually start creating um, the actual image in FreeCAD um, by using a for loop. So what we're gonna have to do is traverse the image starting from the top, working our way to, down to the bottom, and every step we'll work our way across. Now we're gonna use a for loop for that one, and remember that we want to actually skip a number of pixels in this uh, for loop. So we come across and we pick up one, perhaps skip three, pick up one, skip three, pick up one, etc., etc., all the way through. So let's do that now. So for that we need a for loop, um, we're going to do a full range um, because then we can actually use our step. So let's think about the step. Um, I'm going to be stepping every four pixels, I think. So put in a pixel step. So now I'm going to use a for loop to actually uh, go through the pixels of the image. Now I'm going to start from the top and work down to the bottom in my first loop and then I'm going to nest the loop in, inside to actually go across. Now for that I'm going to use a for range, for, it starts loop and then you define a variable in here. Now I'm going to use a variable, I'm going to use y because I'm going on the y axis of the actual image and I want to go in, range, now range takes up to three, three parameters in there. So you can have the index starting position, which we want to actually start at zero. So we're starting at the, the beginning of the Y axis. So the beginning of our image. And then we also specify where we want to go to. So in this one, I want image height. So that will traverse the actual Y axis from zero to the actual image height. So we'll send down through those pixels. But also I I want to be able to step by four pixels each time. Um, and that's where pixel spacing. And this one, this uh, four in range allows you to do an index, the actual maximum value you want to actually go to and a step. So in here, I'm gonna place my pixel spacing value Place a comma first, that'd be a good idea. Pixel spacing. And that's it, so we close that bracket, place in a colon, and then move down. So now if I tab over, and you think where this tab is, will be part of this loop. So now we're moving down the image, and we can actually pick pick up our pixels from there. So I'm gonna actually just do a print in here and show you how this for, work, work, uh, for loop is working. So I'm just gonna print Y then. So I'm printing what's actually pulled into Y. So this will actually print all the Y values as we move down the actual range from zero to the image height. So you'll see that step in steps of four. So if I execute that, So you can see it's executing here, 0, 4, 8, 12, as we're going down. And we want to do the same across the x-axis. So if we come into here, tab over, because we still want to be inside the loop. So 4x in range 0 image width. And step by the pixel spacing. And again, we want to 
tab twice because we want to be in the nested loop. Print X. I'll just clear this. So let's quickly dry run this and see what we get. So let's hit execute. Scroll to the top of our results here. So if we drop in to here, so we're going for four Y range zero to the image height and spacing of four pixels. So when we first come in, print Y, this should be zero, which it is. And then we drop into our next for loop, which is going across. So before we went down the image, and now we're going across the image. So four X in range zero to image width, pixel spacing of four. So because we're very first starting in that range, so the very first item should be zero. So we have, so we've gone zero, zero. And then because we're still within the range, we'll loop back up to the four X and we start in our next next point, which is pixel spacing, add the four to the zero. So we had four, so this should be four, which it is. Again, gone down where it's printed, loops back up, we're still within range. So it now adds the pixel spacing to the X, which was previously four, and now pixel spacing is eight. Sorry, the uh, X is now eight. So we've added the pixel space into that. So when we print it, we'll see eight on there and carry on and carry on. So when it does finally get to how big the actual uh, image width is, it won't go over that because it's within the range. It will actually come out of this and go right back to the top and we'll go back to our four wire. So it will actually add the pixel spacing to the Y, which it currently is at zero. So this should be equal four, which it does. Then it drops back down into the four X. Now, because this is a new loop, because it's just gone right back to the beginning, it's rewound back to the beginning, X will be redefined. So now we're at zero again, because so we've come down our commands after the print is now saying four X we've come out of this loop, it's previously finished before, we've gone back to the top and now it's starting again, so x should equal zero, which if we look, it does. So now we can get to the stage of actually going in and having a look at the pixel and seeing if it is populated with color. So what we need to do is actually pull the pixel that is relevant for the xy position. Now we've got a bit of a problem with that is because that all the pixels, if they were kept in a map type collection, so if it, that was basically a grid um, similar to our, our image, um, because this is in grid layout, so we can actually go across like this and we know that at say, X 15 by Y 2 we know we're starting our star so those those pixels around that area will actually be uh, be populated but we haven't got that what's happened is that when list information has come in we've actually got a linear list so we've literally gone from our 0 to 32 in our list is the first line and then from 33 onwards we've got the next row and so on and so on so we've got a linear list down and what we've got to do is that when we pick up our rows we've got to convert a corner to, an, to a linear list um, which is actually quite easily to, easily done so if I jump back so I'm gonna actually put in there a variable called IDX, which will be our index into our pixel. So let's call it um, pixel IDX. What we need to do is take the X position. So we know that we're going across the screen, so we take X. So if we are at pixel zero, that will be zero. 
plus, I'm going to put this into bracket to make it easier, image width and time, but times that image width by Y. So what I'm going to do is just remove the prints and I'm going to explain what's actually happening here. So that's output what we're getting. Caps lock off. So as you can see after we've run that we've got our data for the pixel indexes and they're always stats of four. Now if you look down this here looks a bit suspect but, but it actually isn't. Because we're in a range we've kept in the range for the first row of our image from it zero to the actual image width which is 30, I think it was 32. So we've actually kept within that range, not on the range, within the range. So you would have thought, you know, you hit 32 and then gone back to the beginning, but it's actually within that range. So that's the reason why that is. The next what set row here, it starts at 128. Well, if you look at the full Y, again, that's kept in within the range. So we're looking at um, a range of probably 32, but we haven't got quite got there, 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 but we have stepped by four. So we've got that go down four pixels. So in our list, we've got a mix, we've got a miss, miss four lots of 32 in that list. And that's the reason why it's actually jumped that range. Or however long the actual image is, it might be 31, it might be 30. I'm not quite sure. Um, I believe it's 32. So that's the reason why we've got a jump in the range there. And you'll see that when we next go down to our next range. So we've gone. So that that there is actually two rows of the image, but stepped by four. And the same again, and the same again. So it's all to do with spacing of the pixels. So if you see that, that might look, look a bit suspect, but it's actually correct. So now we've actually picked up the actual pixel index, we can actually go and grab the pixel from the actual uh, list itself and do a comparison. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna create a variable in here and actually call it px for pixel and I'm going to go take my list and actually using a square bracket I can index into my lex by pixel idx that. and that will pick up the pixel that I need to check so I'm just going to print that just bring this on guys so you can see why what's actually happening. Clear that and execute that. And there you go. So you can see that I'm going through my pixel data. I'm picking up the pixel each time in a for loop. And you can see that these haven't got data, but this one has. And so on and so forth. So now we've got the pixel data, we can actually check to see if they actually, if it actually contains something. So we can actually say if it's not our ignore color, then we can actually move on. So I'm going to say type over if our pixel. doesn't equal uh, ignore color and then I'm going to use colon there so I'm going tab over tab in and I'm going to just print our pixel now so we just should be printing our pixels that actually have something in there 
That's cool. That's where our pixels that have data, and we can use that data to actually create elements on our screen. So these, if I take the X and Y now of these, so print X. I'm just going to concatenate the X to that and Y. And do the same for Y. And there you can see we've got our individual coordinates to create an object on screen for our sketch. Okay, for the next part of this, we actually need to create a sketch. So go to create new sketch and on the part design, we want to create body and create a sketch and the XY plane and okay. Now this is where this Python console comes in handy because if I create a simple circle in there, you can see it's actually created a commander here called app.addiffdocument.sketch.agilemetry part circle and it's plated, placed a circle at 21 minus 21 4.7. If I hit escape and I click on this, you can see that vector actually matches the vector that I selected, minus 21, 4.7. So that is our X and Y coordinates that we're going to pump into our creation of elements. So what I'm going to do is, because I moved it, remember that we've got another command here, so don't take this one, take the actual one where the add geometry was, was used and copy that. Jump back over to your sketch and then where I've got my print pixel, these two, I don't need these anymore, I'm going to drop that command in here and make sure that it's tabbed over correctly. Now if we look through, we've got minus 21, 4.7, so this is where X and Y comes in handy. So we're going to place X in here and Y in here. So what we've done, we know that if we've got the pixel that isn't our ignore color, so it's actually populated with data, so it's so it's actually got color in there that we're not ignoring, we actually drop in and then at the X and Y position that we've gone through and calculated with our loop, we'll place that vector in there. So let's try that. Go back to the document and I'm going to get rid of this. I'm just going to go to my macro, hit play. I've got no errors that have come up, which is good. And if we jump over to our document, you can see nothing's happening as of yet. But the reason why is if we go out to edit, refresh, and you can see that we have a star shape there. If I can actually center that onto the screen. There we go. So our star shape is there, but it's not the actual, it's interconnecting. And the reason why is because when we created our star shape, we didn't specify a size for these actual elements here. So let's solve that one. What I'm going to do is just delete these. Jump back in here, and if we look at our vector, here's the size, so it's 2.5. So that is gonna be the actual diameter. I'll just press Control Z to get them back. Let's have a look at the size of these. Let's have a look at the constraint diameter. So it's 5.16. So 2.5 is actually the radius. 
So if I click on here, I add, add a constraint of radius, and we can see 2.58 millimeters. So that's good. So we can use that. So let's get rid of this. So that's 2.5. So I'm going to put a radius of circle. And I'm going to put one in there as, I'm going to go for 1.25. I'm going to use that radius of circle where we've got 2.5 and place that in there. All nice and clear. So let's run that again. Have a look what we got. Obviously we need to edit refresh. And there we go. There's our star in there. If I reduce the actual, it's actually going across, I'm actually probably get a better image. So let's do that as well. And also we'll put this app.active document recompute in there so we don't have to refresh each time. Let's get rid of this. come in and I'm going to actually reduce this to one. Now I don't want to refresh every single time that we place something on the screen. I'm going to do that the last thing. So what I've done is I hit enter and I've done this the last command so it's in line with the four so when we drop out the for loop that will actually recompute. And the pixel spacing I'm going to reduce down to two. Let's see what happens this time. So we've got nothing on screen. And now that should automatically be refreshed. And there we go, that's our star. Now I can come down a bit more with the pixel spacing. Sorry, with the actual um, size. So I'm going to do that here. And go for 0.5. Oops. Let's get rid of all these. Let's run that again. There you go. That's that star. It is actually around the wrong way. That's better. So you can see the star now has been created. So that's how you would convert an image to free CAD for a nice little drilling pattern like this. One of the things you can add is not to get into too much about the architecture of these things is that this is actually running on the same thread as the actual um, GUI of FreeCAD. So the minute you run this, it will actually lock up the actual FreeCAD itself until it's finished. So if you're using some kind of a large image, it will actually lock lock it up. So you actually need what you need to do is actually allow the the GUI to have time to catch up and we need to place a little piece of code in there to actually process any events that are actually sitting on that on that thread and that's easy to do with a simple simple command but we have to actually bring in another library to do that and that library is from PySide import Qt GUI and then what you want to do in one of these loops so you can either do it in the X loop or the Y loop um, depending on how big the image is um, it might be worth placing it in the X loop so it does it every time you cycle around the X loop but for the small images the Y loop will should be sufficient so the command you want to place in there will be in line for with the X loop Qt GUI dot Q application process events and that will free up the actual GUI to do any processing that it needs. So we run that now. As you can see 
that's all run nicely. I think we'll leave that for now, so that's good. Um, in the next video, we'll play with shapes like hexagons with this piece of code and actually placing hexagons on the screen and having them say slightly offset so we get a nice nice effect um, rather than having them directly underneath each other so they will be rather than being like that they will be actually offset like so as you work across the screen um, also we're looking at the rotation setting some kind of rotation like so rather than the hexagon going this way they will be like this way so it's more of a beehive hexagon and then using that together with some some placement to actually get them in the correct position and making it look a bit more more interesting um, also using other shapes as well squares ovals and creating certain shapes yourself and using those and we'll just just extend that further okay so I hope you enjoy that it's a bit of a long video but there's quite a lot of content in there and also it takes you over how to use for loops collections and actually how to load an image into FreeCAD and manipulate it and manipulate the data there okay I'll see you again if you like what you're seeing please subscribe to my site and also I have a Ko-Fi site um, where you can actually donate a few pence or a few pounds dollars or whatever your currency is and that's at ko-fi.com slash m-a-n-g zero and there you'll be able to help me fund my site and all the money that I actually get from any funds will actually get pushed back into the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing. I'll see you next time.